tonight we're going to highlight two separate noteworthy incidents by uh, uh, incidents by members of our uh, police department. And the uh, first incident involved uh, Lieutenant Gary Panicella, Sergeant Jason Culver, and uh, Patrolman Brian O'Mara. So like this is a <laughs> this is a pretty incredible story. Uh, on October twelfth. At 2017, at 1.41 p.m., police headquarters received a 911 call from a contractor stating that his friend had just had a serious accident with a circular saw and had severed his hand. Upon arrival, the officers immediately assessed the situation, and uh, Patrolman Brian O'Mara quickly applied a tourniquet to the victim's arm to control the bleeding. Um, the officers assessed the situation quickly and decided at that point to immediately transport the victim to Robert Wood uh, Johnson uh, Barnabas Hospital in New Brunswick. Um, they knew that time was of the essence. Sergeant Culver drove the victim while Lieutenant Panicello was in the back seat administering first aid to the victim in the rear of the car. Mm -hmm. Patrolman Amara took other immediate measures to preserve the hand to help give the victim his best chance of recovery. Because of the quick response and actions of these officers, the victim underwent successful reattachment surgery and is progressing very well today. In fact, we're happy to have that in individual here tonight. His name is Mr. Robert Shangle, and he would like to say a few words to the officers. So Mr. Shangle, feel free to come up. We're happy to have you here this evening. Well, first, I want to thank them all and this is my first chance to really get uh, and thank you enough. Uh, because if it wasn't for them, I might not even be here. But because of them, I have my arm back and I can actually move it, which is a good thing. Um, I'm just glad that they got there as fast as they did and they assessed what they had to do and they got it done quickly. I think we made it to the hospital in like two and a half minutes. <laughs> I, who, was, who was driving? I'm glad you like to drive fast. <laughs> I am very happy. <laughs> so I, I have to thank them because if it wasn't for them, like I said, I might not even be standing here because I could have bled out. But thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. I'd like to call up uh, Sergeant Ted Haas. That's our next individual that we're going to be recognizing today. Um, on July 3rd, 2017, a woman who resides in Holland Park walked into police headquarters to report a theft of her purse. Sergeant Ted Haas spoke with the victim and found out that she is the mother of two children, one of whom is autistic, which requires her to spend the vast majority of her time caring for him. She also relies heavily on social uh, service assistance to make ends meet. The victim was very concerned because her purse contained her county identification card, her driver's license, her social security card, several debit cards, and finally her EBT card, which is an electronics benefit transfer cards card, which allows her to buy her uh, groceries and food for her family. Sergeant Haas uh, learned that the victim was supposed to go food shopping that day, but she had no way of purchasing food without the EBT card, and it is a lengthy process to uh, uh, replace it. At this point, Sergeant Haas proceeded to go above and beyond the call of duty. He selflessly provided the victim with $200 in cash from his own money so she could buy food for her family. And he further made arrangements so that the victim could receive transportation to the New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission to obtain a new driver's license. The incident was brought to my attention through another officer. Sergeant Haas never said a word to me about it, not surprisingly. The last thing Sergeant Haas would want uh, was to be recognized for what he did. He was not seeking recognition from the department, nor did he want anything in return. In fact, I had to kind of uh, talk him into uh, uh, agreeing to let me bring him up here tonight. Um, however, I felt it is important for all of you to know, uh, because this speaks volumes about his character, compassion, and commitment to go out of his way to help those he comes into contact with. Uh, I wasn't surprised at all when I heard of uh, Sergeant Haas's actions because I've known and worked with him for many years. And I'm very proud of your actions and I want to publicly thank you and recognize you for that. Thank you, Sergeant.
Uh, so, so the Board of Health did has has been monitoring that that property. It is it is currently owned. It's all non-perishable um, food in there. So there's nothing that presents any kind of public uh, health or public safety uh, hazard there. Um, but again, the property has been purchased, and it's you know as as long as long as long as it's up to code and it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't uh, present any any public health uh, or public safety concern. Um, that's that's. Uh, that's really where that stands. Um, uh, our, uh, our our code our code enforcement officer and our health officer have have looked into it. I agree that you know it would be nice to to work with the uh, uh, to to work with the uh, the the property owner to donate those foods, but at this point, um, the food's been there for a while, so I'm not certain that our you know community food pantry would want to accept it, um, and there's. At some point, that 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 area is going to be, you know, put put to a different use. Are you able to say what kind of business purchased it, or what who's purchased the? I don't know. I'm just curious. Just just a new pro just a new owner. Yeah, no, we don't know. It hasn't. There's been nothing. Yeah, we don't, we we don't know what plans are. Hopefully, for that. they donate. The